Okay, hello all. This is a video on um, using MIDI with Studio One. Um, it's it's really aimed at my students teaching them how to compose things using MIDI um, and then transfer it into notation so they can submit it to their teacher and get notes out of there as well. Sometimes it can be problematic um, as you play different note lengths in, you know, and you try and put your expression in. Uh, sometimes it can cause problems when it comes to getting the, the notes out of the software. Um, I'm using a few different sound sets here from Spitfire Audio. I've got this Labs piano, uh, which is free, and then I've got these strings, ones which are part, and woodwinds and brass, which are part of the Albion One, um, and they sound absolutely amazing, um, and I'm going to use those for now. I'm not deliberately putting a plug in for them, but there you go. All right, so I'm in Studio One. Uh, when I click on these, I can get the different sounds from um, my MIDI keyboard. Oh, I'll hold that up for you. Just a cheap little MIDI keyboard. I'm also going to be using this wheel here as a bit of MIDI input, um, which works really nicely with Albion 1, as you'll see. So, let's just see what I've got here. Sort of a snappy, short, sharp strings there. I'm getting nothing out of this one at the moment. Let's find out why. Uh, I'm trying, I've got to pull things up onto this display so you can see. No, that'd be why. Another sort of detached strings, a spiccato that is there. Keep going. Uh, see, what I really want. By the way, I'm, I'm composing completely on the fly here, which is why I'm... Something like that might do. Now, if I go into the instrument options, with MIDI, quite often you can set it to take control of different parameters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this little wheel here to control um, maybe expression dynamics, maybe both. Sometimes I set that one to both. The way I do that is I right click and go learn MIDI automation and then you wiggle it and look, Ooh, it moves that up and down. Um, I can do the same button on expression and it moves both of them at the same time, which is very handy for this particular software. So it's loud or soft. Bring it up, crescendo. Um, this one also has uh, this little thing here. I can, I can s set it to use the mics that are far away from the instrument, or I can set it to use the mics that are really close. Quite a dry sound, as opposed to a far away sound. There we go. Okay, so that's using MIDI to adjust those settings in Albion 1. I don't want to get too much into Albion 1 because you may not have it, you may not want to buy it, um, but that's what I'm using, so just so you're aware. And I'm going to start composing. I'm just going to make something up here on the fly. I'm going to use uh, an ostinato, so I'm just going to put that basically underneath my song and then compose on top of it, and then we're going to look at getting it down to MIDI. Um, I need a metronome set up. How fast was that? Dun, 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 dun. So I'm just clicking on the word tempo to about the speed that I was playing at. That's giving me that tempo there. That is fine. I'll need a metronome. Whoa. How about 4-4 four, four timing? We'll be just fine. And I might even turn that down a touch. It was a little bit, a little bit loud for me. Let's go to the start. I'm actually struggling a little bit with the um, the touch of this isn't the greatest if you've got weighted keys go for weighted keys weighted keys are good all right, there's my little ostinato. 
There it is, done. Um, I'm going to zoom out using the little pyramid here. I'm going to duplicate that so it continues on for a period of time. Maybe I can come in here with um, brass because I like brass. French horn, among other things. I'm just going to jump back up in here and learn that MIDI again for these. I actually need long notes. Let's make it a bit further away, a bit more reverb. Let's try something like that. Um, here we go. Let me move my wheel thing, you can see that there. And that will do. Okay, so we've got um, a little bit of a melodic snippet there on top of an ostinato. Um, I've got some high woodwinds here that I could copy. Might go for those octaves. Again, I just need to reset my MIDI up to learn this here. Boom, there's one. There's the other. Might make them far away. I want to sit them back in the mix as well. I'm just going to play a few things and work out what works here. So boom. Definitely going to do this one to the metronome because it's it's a little trickier with the woodwinds. Sometimes I find um, I might even bring that up so that you can see. Oh no, it doesn't bring up the keyboard. That's all right. Here we go. <laughs> Masterpiece. All right. Um, not yet. Not really. Brass needs a bit of compression on it, doesn't it? Comes up a bit too far. Oops. All right. Um, so what you can do now with your MIDI is if you double click on these, you can actually see the notes being played. And if you look at them closely, uh, with these being bar numbers and these being the beats within the bar, you can see that I am not always on the mark. Um, I can be, well, you know, that one's spot on bar nine, boom. And then the next one is just a little bit in front. It's pretty good. That one's spot on. That one's a bit in front. That one's a bit in front. That one's a bit in front. That one's a bit. So I tend, I do tend to play in front. And I think it's because this woodwind sound, um, it just takes a moment to sort of come on. Um, so that's what happens. So 
You can use a thing called quantize, which tries to put the notes, boom, straight on the beat, um, which is good for notation. Uh, it's good if you're close and it does put them on the beat. Um, so let's have a look at that. So if I select all of these, control A to select all, there's a thing called quantize here, and it will take it to the nearest 16th note, which is what is set there. So you can take it to the nearest 16th or whatever note value you need. Um, so on the keyboard, pressing Q will automatically quantize it and it will try to put the notes where they should be. Let's try that. Right, so you can see that, that spot on, spot on, spot on, spot on, spot on. No, this one's off. It needs to be there. So sometimes you do have to do some manual fixing. Uh, that one's wrong as well. That's where the note was closer to this line than that line. Um, you know, where my timing was off and it's, it's corrected in, in the wrong way. And then you have to fix it up a bit. If you don't fix it up, it's going to be messed up when you try and get it to notation. All right, I'm going to go back a couple of steps. Boom, 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 boom. Boom. Now these are... Dun, dun, dun. They're on the quaver, so I could probably go to the nearest eighth and see what happens there. Select all, quantize. Now this is looking a bit better. There's one off here. Ooh, don't want to do that. Let's grab that one. But other than that, something weird there. That's just an extra one. Delete him. Other than that, we are pretty darn good. There's two off there, isn't there? Let's take them back. And now when I put this in my notation software, I should be pretty much spot on. The other thing is the length of the note. And you can go through and you can make them all the same length if you want to. Remember doing this is sort of dehumanizing it a bit. And you lose some of your expression in the sound as well. So you got to think of your objective. Is it, I want this to notes? Or is your objective, well, I want it to sound good on here. And I want it to notes. So you got to go in between. I'll probably leave that like that. Let's look at our French horn. So looking at our well, low brass, rather, I should say. Looking at our low brass, um, that's pretty close. You know, that's pretty close to the start of that note value. I'm inclined to leave it. Notice how the notes connect or cross over there. That's because I was playing legato. Um, there is actually a setting which makes your notes legato, which can be very handy in Studio One. But this is already pretty close. I did a lift up there. Um, I did a triad there with the brass. I find in MIDI you do a triad in brass, it starts to sound a bit, I don't know, 70s synthy. Oh, I probably shouldn't have done that anyway. I have. There you go. Let's have a look at our strings. Now, remember I copied this one. So if I change this one, I might want to delete the other two and then come back and put it in there. But let's have a look. Uh, it's sort of pretty close with that. Again, just playing a little bit ahead. Um, you know what? I'm going to leave that one so that you can see when we take it to notes, you can see then how it looks um, in the notation. So now what we need to do is um, save as, I think. I'm playing a bit on the fly here. Save as to MIDI. Beautiful. Um, I'm going to save that to my desktop. Um, demo composition.midi save bang file format does not or may not preserve all content that's fine um, that's what I want to do now I need to fire up my notational software um, I'm going to fire up two I'm going to fire up Sibelius and I'm going to fire up Muse score which I have installed and you're going to see how different notation software can uh, interpret it slightly differently last time I did this Sibelius was closer to how I wanted there you go why? I don't know. I don't know why, but it was. Um, I might just need to close Studio One because it's saying it doesn't have enough memory. Yes, yes, we know. You're firing up. Everyone should know about it. All right. Uh, so fire. Uh, I might even do just do a drag and drop. Uh, desktop. 
like a lot of demo composition. There it is. Boom and boom. So it's picking up those staccato notes actually quite well. Let's have a listen. Oh, it's interpreted as piano, so you have to change the sounds. Not a big deal. Okay, so you can see at the start it was pretty damn good and then we got to this and it's like oh what's uh it's tried to put it on a different stave and well okay so there might be some fixing up to do there manually um, this is looking pretty good this looks pretty good until here triplets hmm i wasn't trying to play triplets but again so some more fixing up to do in there uh whoa yeah that's a bit whacked uh let's have a look at our other page if i can get rid of this thing i don't want it here you can see those legato notes where i've crossed over and i've held those notes on you can see how music score is interpreting it here it's not how i intended so some fixing up there to do the bulk of it here looks pretty good but again some triplets um so you can see uh the composing process was much quicker than plugging notes into the stave but afterwards, there is some fixing up to do, depending on how you quantize. All right, Sibelius, let's see what you think. Boom. Uh, blah, 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 okay. Just leave everything as defaults for now. Let's come up from my other screen, I'll drag it up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's some octave issues. But let's, um, I'm not even sure what octave I did that in now. Let's just go, let's make them, let's make it a viola. Strings, viola. Alto clef. Yeah, that looks tidy. Let's hear it. Could probably be notated as quavers, that couldn't it? a way of fixing that I'll show you in a moment it's interpreted my woods as piano but that's an easy fix all right see how in some spots perhaps where I've held the key on a little bit longer it's interpreted it as a quaver as opposed to a semi quaver here um, now last time I did this Sibelius did a much better job of, of picking up and putting to notes uh, what I had played, I thought. Um, this time round, it actually looks like Muse score has. So worth checking both. But it is um, highly dependent on, on your decisions when you quantize and when you set the lengths. So maybe once you've composed a piece, you save another copy, and then you can actually, in Studio One, set the length of each note so that they are all quaver length. And that might improve this a little bit. If I go back to the start, um, so Bayless has this cool thing on the numpad where you can, uh, if the num lock is off, I think it is, um, you can select what note value that should be. So if my numpad's on and I press three, two on it, yep, so three is a quaver, boom. And suddenly you're looking at something pretty damn tidy. Um, yes, so there's still some triplets to fix up, but you know, that could be as easy as copy and paste from a bar that worked. We've still got this one here. I can do the same thing. Three, and bang, we've got quavers. Obviously, you might not want to select the whole part like that. You might just want to select a few bars, and bang, you've got them into quavers. But you can see, whilst there's still some fixing up to do, a lot um, better than plugging the notes in. The bass line, you can see this legato stuff here. Um, that might just be, oh yeah, delete that one. And yeah, okay, that works. Um, same thing here, I've got where I've started a note a little bit earlier or a little bit later. There again. But you know, I'm not, I'm not far off having that notated, and that took me all of, uh, what, 20 minutes or so to complete. So, good luck with your composing with uh, Studio One and Sibelius or MuseScore or Mastering.